Julia M. Spencer, real estate investor, advisor, and enthusiast. And my website is www.juliamspencer.com. The M stands for money. And um, in this short video, I'm analyzing a specific property that one of my um, friends has had asked me to look at to see if it's a good deal to invest in. And this particular friend of mine is looking into flipping and he asked my advice on this property. So I'm going to go really quickly through this, these forms that he had sent me and to see um, what I thought of this deal. Now, overall, my analysis of this is that it, it's a, it's a deal. It's an okay deal, but, um, there's a little bit more information that needs to be found. And also there's a couple things that I'm, a little bit concerned about at this point so I would probably um, question some of this so let's look at it first he sent me basically a couple of files and, and namely he sent me four files and one of them was the first one was the comps and the comps is actually right here of this property in Chicago it looks like it's a four bedroom, two bath, 2,100 square feet house built in 1899. So it's a very old house. This is the list price. This looks like a MLS listing or comps from some sort of MLS website or a realtor. So that right away tells me that the property has been on the market for a while, which may mean that it's that it's been a stale product that's been sitting on the market for a while. So I, I don't know where he got this information from or if this is something he plugged into his own software. Um, my question would be with comps, you have to be very careful analyzing comps. And it looks like um, the comps are divided into what has been sold, what is pending to be sold, what is active. And you can see this is all retail sales retail tells me that's that's full market price there's no discount there's no short sale it's not a foreclosure it's not anywhere where there's already some equity built into the property it's basically retail price anybody and everybody can walk up and buy these properties for these prices these ones below that are active um, that being said it looks like all the prices are uh, somewhere between 295000 and all the way up to 749000 And it looks like they are sorted by price. Um, and so what, what we're looking at is mainly this days on the market, which means how many days did it took to sell these properties. And it looks like these pending ones have been on the market forever, like almost a year for these two to sell. But it looks like the ones that have been sold have not sat that long. Maybe a month for this one. Um, this one maybe two months, a little bit more than two months, and right around two to three months looks like on these. Um, but these ones that are being sold, you can see the range of the days on the market is just really wide range. You have six, six days and some of them have been sitting there forever. So, um, this is really difficult. This is a really difficult analysis here because, uh, it does, this doesn't tell me a trend of any kind. And it looks like also that this is the same property right here. So I'm not really understanding. This is the same address, same square footage. Um, it looks like the days on the market are different here. So I'm not sure. I think, I think this is what this tells me is that they had it on the market for 48 days and then they reduced the price and now it's been on the market for 21 more days for the same property. So there's been a price reduction here on this really high end one. Um, the other ones, it looks like, let's, let's look at the square footage here first. It looks like there's a, also a wide variety of when the houses were built. There's some really old ones. There's a new one. Um, the new one's been on the market too for almost three months. But it's really hard to tell from these comps how fast a property in this area would sell. 
It's also really hard to tell, and this is 10, 10 bedrooms. That's kind of weird. So it, it just looks like, if I look at the 295, this is what I would see is 295K, and I look, there's, there's, the one that's the closest is 2, 260, was on the market for 40 days. And the next one after that, 71 days. Um, these price, and then there's one that's even cheaper, 499K, that was on the market for a long time, really long time. Like seven months. So this is, um, these comps are all over the place. There is no trend here. So you can get lucky and sell your property in three months if it's priced right, or else it can sit forever like some of these. So this is, um, this, I would be scared of these comps. I, these comps don't tell me much information. Um, this, this is where you need to find out and go to a realtor and ask a realtor, is like, what do you think of these comps? Give me an analysis. Tell me what is, the no kidding expectation that I need to have for this property or even ask a realtor and they, they may or may not know this and may have information of this because they may have shown some of these houses. But look at these houses that have been on the market for very few days versus these ones that have been on the market forever and ask a realtor what are, are there any special features that the faster selling ones had? And then if you're going to flip in this area, you're going to want to make sure you put those features in there that people are looking for. So you don't want to belong to the long, long day groups here. You want to belong to the, you know, to the six day, or in this case, this is active retail. So you want to belong to this way, but it looks like for the ones that are sold or even are pending, 40 days is the, um, 40 days is the, the lowest amount of time that something has sat, but Again, this is hard to, to compare because it looks like it's a much, much bigger house. It has 3,149 square feet. Or, I'm sorry, it's 1,800 1, square feet. The lot is 3,149, so it's actually smaller. And, um, that's it. It's also cheaper. The square footage, dollars per square footage is 144. Well, as what we're looking at here is, a, is, um, in a different range. So, Anyway, this this comp report doesn't tell me much. I would definitely talk to a realtor. Find somebody that's experienced in the area and has been working in the area for a long time because this this raises some red flags to me because there's no trend here. So that's what I would say about this one. Um, the next file would be the property profile. So let's, let's just, whoops, let's just not download it, that's not what I wanted to do, but appropriate profiles right here. So this is a picture from Google Maps, presumably. Just from the picture, um, I, I don't know if this is a great area, but I can see that there is um, power lines going over the street, power lines coming from the street to the house, if this is a house. And there's like a really long cable running for the um, satellite dish here and it just looks like it doesn't look very it doesn't look like a really good neighborhood to me it doesn't look like a good neighborhood all the better neighborhoods usually have the power lines buried on the ground um, so the I mean this is an older area so and I don't know the Chicago market so this might be a very good area but these are some of the things that I'll look at also it looks like the, this picture may have been taken in the winter time maybe there i don't see anything greenery or grass or anything so it would definitely be useful to go to the property and look at it inside and outside and very take some very detailed pictures and have it um, possibly even analyzed by a property inspector it costs about five hundred dollars to get an, a property inspector to come out there and give you a really good report of what you're looking at and also you could possibly get a realtor to give you a, an, a like a over, over the hand kind of like a provisional appraisal of what the property is actually worth. So this is um, obviously from the MLS, so you'd be paying retail. There's no equity already built in this, in this purchase. Um, this is all the information we already had. Looks like a very small lot, by the way. 
but I guess that's how it is over in the Chicago market. Um, two stories. The one thing with two stories is they're kind of more difficult to rehab a lot of times because you're dealing with two types of floors and I presume there's a basement also. And so I'm, I'm not familiar a lot with, with two story houses. Most of the houses that are, I own are one story and there's a little bit more difficulty with two story houses and, and rehabbing them simply because it's usually a taller house which you have to climb up on the roof and if you have to fix something it's it's just more difficult you need more equipment you need some scaffolding you need um any anything that's outside is more difficult in a two story house anyway so that that might raise the uh, rehab price more than what your estimate is um this right here that's humongous that's humongous that's a huge tax pro tax estimate i don't know where this information came from it's um this would be scary to me because if you you um are rehabbing obviously you go in for the quickest turnaround and i think from one of the other documents that i saw you t you take in about eight or nine months to rehab so take this number right here and divide this number by 12 and multiply it by the months that you think that your um your particular project is going to take and you're going to have to shell out that amount and in fact that's probably even going to be part of your closing cost in order for you to close on this house and, and hold it until it's sold and on top of that if i'm if i may just make that quick resi really quick calculation 20 27,660 Let's see, 27,660 divided by 12. That's how much your taxes are per month. That seems quite high. But multiply that by the eight months of holding time for the flipping project, you're out $18,000. I don't know if that was calculated into the profit margin that you calculated later. And that's something to definitely check on because I'm not really sure if that was part of it or not. But that's a huge cost right here. And obviously it goes up every month that there's a delay or some issues. Um, the other thing that I was going to say about that is I do not know um, what the time frame is of when this project, this flipping project, is supposed to begin. So, and I, I'm not familiar with the weather situation up there in Chicago, but there's just certain things that cannot be done in the winter time in Chicago. And um, I'm thinking of heavy snow and heavy cold weather spells and freezing temperatures. So it has to be very carefully planned when an offer is being made on this house. And the timeline has to be watched and basically um, policed very carefully because of that. Because if you have a delay all of a sudden, not because of anybody doing a bad job to your contractors or you yourself or any kind of anything else, the weather can can strike you really badly and and every month that is delayed this particular cost right here as long as um as well as the mortgage cost that you have to pay every month is is just going to kick you kick this whole project into a different dimension where where it's not profitable anymore um and yeah so i guess this amount here was was uh, calculated with these things so it also says it's an unfinished basement, so I'm not sure if the basement is calculated into the square footage. That's something I would ask for. Um, always, of course, always if you add square footage and the price stays the same in your remodeling, you have to kind of choose which things are you going to put most of your efforts into. And that makes it a cheaper house per square footage, which makes it more attractive for, for buyers to buy. So you always want to go for more space, less fanciness and more space when you're rehabbing in order to get the most profit. And we are six pages of this, so let's look at the other pages here. Um, I think there was a breakout of this ballpark estimate later on, so I'll look at that. Mortgage information, there's no information here yet. Um, by the way, if you're, if the lender is Bank of America and this is a bank owned property, Bank of America sometimes has some, um, loans where they put the construction estimate amount 
into the mortgage loan so they give you like an allowance for construction or for rehabbing so you may want to, you may want to ask them I know Wells Fargo is another one that does that some those big lenders have programs like that you have to ask your loan and processor person and um, see what what kinds of information they would need for that so that wouldn't and I don't know where you had expected to take the 121 thousand dollars from for the rehabbing for the repairs but it would be useful to inquire whether that can be calculated into the loan of purchase so it doesn't have to be laid out in front of in front of everything out, out of pocket for your free guide to real estate investing visit julia m spencer.com